But Music City Grand Prix, or for sponsorship reasons, the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix, is a race that has been circled on IndyCar fans' calendars for quite some time. The history of this event is a little complicated. There were failed attempts in both 2010 and 2015, but in 2020, the IndyCar series announced the addition of the Music City Grand Prix, and it would be officially on the schedule for August of 2021. The Nashville Street Circuit measures 2.17 miles and includes 11 turns. Not only will the drivers get to race past Nissan Stadium, home of the Tennessee Titans, but they'll also race straight across the famous Korean War Veterans Memorial Bridge, which spans the Cumberland River. The drivers immediately get to test out how far they can get away with track limits in the first two free practices. This Otto Award is into yeah. the wall somewhere, we think. Front Certainly looks like the left front is flat. Yeah, it's damaged. You can he hit see, the wall, guys. You can see the suspension left. arm. Suspension arm right there is bent, so he has hit the wall somewhere. Turn one, turn two, here it comes. Yep. Oh, oh. That was that's a big the, hit. That's the uh, St. Pete crash we've yep. seen many times onto the back straightaway. A glancing blow at the right front. So potential damage to both front corners because he hit that inside wall. Just caught him out over the bump can't tell how much damage there is other than the rear wing is skewed from this angle. Locked it up. Oh. Big speed. Oh, that's pretty good Actually, hit. happened a lot later than I would have expected. On Thursday, and one of the fun things was seeing his kids go around the track on oh. speed oh. as well. Oh, that's a tricky spot right there. There's a gap in the yeah. wall, and Ray Hall clipped the outside wall. We're going to see him here on the next corner. So he comes out. Everything's good. Gets it a little sideways. Bang, bang. And that's a, that's a pretty bad little spot to hit right there. I wonder if he just locked the rears or he could have touched the inside wall, similar to what Scott Dixon did, but it looked like he might have just locked the rears here. It doesn't even, even look like he was up to speed yet. Like well, he was on locked. full tires. Yeah, rears locked up, and he just lost it on the brakes. <laughs> It's a good thing that happened right at pit entry because you wouldn't want to drive the whole way around the track like that. You'd never make it around. You lose the steering once the wing gets un lodged underneath the front tire. So he's hit the wall somewhere, knocked the front wing off of it. Chilton looks like he's going to be able to back up. And cars off everywhere. Off as well. It's like a so that's in turn 10, the final corner. That's exactly where Rossi crashed. Can't get yeah. Dixon just now hits in the wall, wall trying to 180 it over in turn four. That's where he spun to start the session. And now he's got to be careful because that rear wing is hanging on by a tether at this point. Oh, no. Yeah, you can rear wing's off the car now. Yeah, blow it up. Blow yeah, yeah, it up yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, Session's yeah. over. There's no point in risking it, Scott. From veterans to rookies, it seems most of the field is having a tough time figuring out the circuit. Well, everyone except Colton Herta, who took first place in both free practices. For qualifying, it would also offer a sense of entertainment. In IndyCar, you have multiple groups of qualifying because you don't want the field to get too stacked up when trying to make their fast lap. The entire qualifying session had so many mishaps from both veterans and technically rookies alike. Already, Jimmy Johnson into the wall, red flag on oh, the outlap. That's a big one, too. We have a red flag right away, so this is going to throw a wrench into this whole session for these guys. Yeah, not a single car laying down a time just yet. Big oh. crash by Joseph Newgarden. He was on a big lap, and he's, I don't know why he's trying to be Because he doesn't want to pass the red. He does not want to lose the lap and get bumped out of the Firestone Fast 6, so he finds a runoff area. I don't know if that'll cause a local yellow, causing Newgarden to lose his lap. To add more context, Joseph Newgarden entered this weekend as one of the premier favorites to win the inaugural Music City Grand Prix, but the other American favorite, Colton Herta, looked like he had this race already locked up. Capitalizing on both of his first First place runs and free practice, he was able to clinch the pole no problem. The field was set for the first ever Music City Grand Prix and it was going to have a huge turnout, not only in the Nashville market, but also on TV as well. The TV slot had them right after the NASCAR Watkins Glen race and just before the IMSA race at Road America. So it's safe to say IndyCar and NBC wanted to promote this race as one of the marquee events on the calendar. But at the same 
same time, with all the things we have seen in both practice and qualifying, this race could turn out to be America's version of Baku. Right from the start, we have our very first caution, beginning the trend of madness. Coming towards turn 11 here, so one more left-hander, and this is a very short oh. stretch. And even before they get to green, that's Marcus Erickson, Erickson going over the top of Sebastian Bourdais. What in the world happened there? Well, he was ready to go, and nobody was going yet, and he just drove right over to the back. He still has the green out. Bourdais. I can't believe they have the green out still. Cars drag. Now he's got the wing under the front tire, and it's almost impossible to turn yeah. like that. And, well, we expected it would be wow. wild. Oh, Scott, Scott McLaughlin into the wall. That's at turn four as you come down off the bridge. It's going to be impossible for him to get it three-point turn there or spun around. There's not enough room. Colton Herta, Alexander Rossi, Scott Dixon, Roman Grosjean, Felix Rosenquist. And Marcus oh, Erickson. Oh, Penske cars uh, power each other in the wall. Pagano, Sato, many more. And we have a traffic jam and a stoppage. Will Power stuffed his car down the inside of his teammate and put Simon Pagano right into the wall. I bet Pagano didn't know Power was there. Pagano checked up, Power pounced and tried to squeeze his way through, and then they both just got collected. That's that's really more of a racing incident. Just 20 laps into the inaugural event and we have a whopping four full course yellows. I was expecting this race to kind of remind me of Baku, but damn, this is like Baku times 20. Eventually, we get back to racing again, and just to remind you guys the running order, Colton Herta is absolutely stealing the show. And then we have our fifth caution of the day for VK. Hey, that rhymes. The field not only is bunched up again, but some leaders are forced to pit, and oh my goodness, that is Marcus Erickson leading the race. He was flying in the air not too long ago, but while he's leading the race, Colton Herta is straight up stealing the show. He was making passes in places where many thought you couldn't pass. But so far, our longest green flag stint of the race has only been eight laps. And just past the halfway point, we would get an even bigger surge of cautions. Oh boy, a Ward and Rossi. Uh oh. Can they get it in reverse? They both get reverse. Rossi has to keep backing up so a Ward doesn't run into him. Oh, he stalled. Oh, here comes a yellow. That's a killer for Colton Herta. On the fresh tires, Pato Award made a big move down the inside, it looks like, of Rossi, and they got together, and now Pato Award is stalled, and it's full course yellow. Cody Ware. Caution. Still green. Cody Ware is still running. Lines reverse. Now he needs big revs, first gear, and a huge clutch drop to try to get wheel spin Don't to get go. it straight. Don't try to go up the hill, go the other way. Straight out of Austin Powers right here in the tunnel. Hopefully he can roll back down the hill, pull the clutch, roll it back down. And there you go, you got it now. And there's nobody coming. He stalled now, I stalled it. This will be the yellow. Oh, uh, you see it slam the steering wheel. So I jumped the gun on calling caution. It could have stayed green if he could have kept it running. At one point, I had to question, is this race even real? With all the chaos happening in this race, even Cody Ware had one of his moments that you typically see in NASCAR. But after the eighth caution of the day flew, something miraculous happened. We actually got a lot of green flag laps in. 18 laps of green flag racing was the most we've seen all day, and it was coming down to a nail biter. Between the driver who nearly flipped earlier in the race and Marcus Erickson, and the best driver in car all weekend in Colton Herta. Again, Colton, Paul. I think Herta just hit the wall. Oh. Colton Herta oh has thrown it all away. Disaster. And you know what? His hands were on the wheel, too. He didn't want to let go. He knew a second ahead of time that it's all coming to a crashing end, and you just don't want to believe it as a driver. You don't want to let go. You're so angry instantly. And, and stubborn it's like no this is not happening but it did happen the driver and team that had been up front for basically the entire weekend 
threw the race away in the closing laps. This was a very rare mistake by Colton Herta. Despite the accident, the dude still showed flashes that he is IndyCar's future. Just give him some time because I truly believe that Colton Herta will be a future IndyCar Series champion. Unfortunately, this meant that Marcus Erickson pretty much went unchallenged in the final two laps, pulling off possibly the greatest IndyCar comeback victory in series history. Erickson just uncontested across Focus the board here, the buddy. Bring it home. Drove a masterful race. He had uh, was under immense pressure. He's running light on downforce. Massive crash early in the race, a penalty, and he's going to bring it home. Marcus Erickson has two more corners to go. We've had a spin and win. Danny Sullivan in the 1985 Indianapolis 500. A launch and win. Marcus Erickson went eight years without a victory. He's now won two times in IndyCar. Nice job, Marcus, Marcus Erickson takes the inaugural Music City Grand Prix. To go from being sent all the way to the moon to winning the whole race is absolutely unheard of. Marcus Erickson pulled off the unthinkable, and it was fitting that he won this very chaotic race. The inaugural Music City Grand Prix did have mixed feedback, but overall, I think the Music City Grand Prix does have some staying power for the future. The race as a whole actually drew in the best TV rating for the IndyCar series outside of the Indy 500 since 1998. You also had more than 100,000 people show up over the course of the three-day event. The city of Nashville loves its racing. The inaugural event did have a lot of mayhem, but we'll truly see if this event does have the staying power over the next few years, as well as seeing what type of street course modifications we will get after seeing the mayhem that took place. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.